slowly but surely getting here. I think the, the crowd is moving in here. And we're so appreciative to see everyone. Welcome back to St. Francis University. What a joy it is to see you and to be with you today. Um, to begin, of course, we're going to have our opening prayer. And then once the opening prayer is finished, I'm going to come up and I'm going to bless these wonderful crosses that you're seeing here in front of you. And I just want to say off the bat that these crosses were designed and created by Tom Margusio and our physical plant staff and grounds folk because they harvested the wood from the trees where we now have our new science building. And so what a beautiful idea that was, that some of the pine trees that were there have now been turned into the crosses that will be placed into the classrooms of our new science building. And so it's a, a truly a beautiful, beautiful image. Once I'm finished with that, then we're going to put a, an interesting slide up for you, and we're going to talk a little bit about transition, some transition issues that some of you have in your mind as to questions. We're going to talk about our map for our wonderful new strategic plan. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues relative to what we call our scorecard, balanced scorecard that we're going to use to monitor and to develop that image of our strategic plan and monitor it as we progress on it. And then we're going to announce a little bit of a engagement for the whole community as to how all of us could have some ideas about how we can enter into the dynamics of the strategic plan. And so we'll talk a little more about that. And so at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Father John Mark Klaus, the director of our campus ministry program, to come forward and to lead us in our opening prayer. Thank you, Father John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, whose goodness fills our hearts with joy this day. Help us during this new school year to encourage and promote the Franciscan values for future generations. As we begin this Community Development Week, let us be mindful of the values of the mission we are called at St. Francis University. Strengthen us with your grace and wisdom to work in harmony and peace, for you are God forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together our prayer. O Most High, glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart. Give me a right faith, a certain hope, and a perfect love, understanding and knowledge, O Lord, that I may carry out your holy and true will. Amen. As we gather together here, let us present our needs to the Lord as we pray. For blessings on our faculty, staff, and administration, that we may be models of charity in the lives of the students we minister to and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the hearts of the students may be moved by a sense of love and service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit guides all members of our St. Francis community to reflect on how we are living out the call to be instruments of peace and justice through our Catholic Franciscan values. We pray to the Lord. For our alumni, benefactors, and the friends of St. Francis University, we pray to the Lord. For the needs and intention of all gathered here today, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers as we pray them through Christ our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Send on your blessings upon us, so that we may be more faithfully devoting, voted, devote ourselves to the service of others here at St. Francis University. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy on you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace. And may the Lord bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you so very much, Father John Mark. One wonders sometimes why in most Catholic institutions there is a cross in almost every one of the rooms. Well, truly, I believe it originates in the very life of the person of St. Francis of Assisi. I would like to just read a passage from St. Bonaventure's Major Life of St. Francis. Christ himself was Francis's only guide during all this time. And now in his goodness, he intervened once more with the sweet influence of his grace. Francis left the town one day to meditate out of doors. And as he was passing by the church of San Damiano, which was threatening to collapse with age, he felt urged to go in and pray. There as he knelt in prayer before a painted image of the crucified, he felt greatly comforted in spirit, and his eyes were full of tears as he gazed at the cross. Then, all of a sudden, he heard a voice coming from the cross and telling him three times, Francis, go and repair my house. You see, it is all falling down. Francis was alone in the church, and he was terrified at the sound of the voice. But the power of its message penetrated his heart, and he went into an ecstasy. Eventually, he came back to himself and prepared to obey the command he had received. He was quite willing to devote himself entirely to repairing the ruined church of San Damiano. Although the message really referred to the universal church, which Christ won for himself at the price of his own blood, as the Holy Spirit afterwards made him realize, and he himself explained to the friars. It is so evident that in our Catholic tradition, all of us are called to gaze upon the cross, as did St. Francis, and to listen to the direction that the Lord in our life gives to us. We pray in a very special way that our students and our faculty and staff, as they are in those rooms where these crosses are placed, will also take a moment in the course of their activities to listen to the voice of the crucified, leading them to do what God wants you to do in your life. And so at this time, as we now bless these crosses, which will be placed in the classrooms of our new science building, we ask also that the Lord lead us as a community as we begin this new school year, to look upon that cross and to hear the voice go forth. Rebuild not only my church, but the lives of your students, the lives of your peers, the life of this community, the life of this region, our world. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray this day that as we hold up this sign of your Son, 
who you truly gave to us as a sign of your intense and unending love, we pray that this image may become a part of us as it became a part of St. Francis of Assisi. That it would also become a part of the life of each and every one of our students, of all of our faculty, staff, and our visitors. Bless these crosses today, crafted out of the love of our workmen here at this university. We are so pleased that they have used their gifts and their talents so well to allow us to lift our eyes, to open our hearts, and to hear better your command of love. And so, Lord, we ask you to bless these crosses today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, everyone. Well, surprise, I'm back. <laughs> what an interesting turn of events. And it is a joy to be back. It's a joy to be with you again for at least one more year. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that year is going to progress and where things are going to go and where the Board of Trustees is and where our community uh, of the Franciscans of the Third Order Regular are. I'm going to fill you in on a little bit of that news. And we put a mic down here in the front. So also, if there is anyone that has a specific thing that they would like to ask, we really want this to be somewhat of an open forum today relative to that particular question because I know many of you probably have, first of all, were shocked when you saw me here. And maybe if you have been out of the out of the playing field of things during the course of the summer, uh, maybe you've heard rumors. Maybe you've had uh, all kinds of things uh, that you've been picking up. Uh, some of it may be true. Some of it may not be. So we're going to give you a chance to ask some of those questions and to clear the air if you so wish to do it. I just want to say, though, that I'm not the only person that I'm thrilled to be back here. There are some who have come back to us, and we have a lot of new faculty and staff. And I know over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to meet them all. But I would like to take a moment right now to welcome our new staff. Uh, if, if they could just stand, if there's anyone here that's new, could you just jump up for a moment? That's, that's new here today. Let's give them all a round of applause. We are so delighted that you have joined this family. We are so delighted and we truly do hope that this transition time for you is an easy one. Please know that we're all here to help you. So if you have questions, if you have any ideas, if you have anything that you need to talk about, please talk to somebody in this room or come right into my office and see me personally. I would love to meet you personally and talk to you. We are always blessed to have uh, some new Franciscans as well on board, and we're thrilled uh, today to have uh, one of our friars who had been here before. He went off and got his uh, educational doctorate degree, his EDD, and he's back from Immaculata University, and that is Brother Dennis Schneider, who's right in the back of the... Uh, stand up, Dennis. Let everyone see who you are if they forgot. There he is. It's great to have him back. He did an awful lot for us when he was here years ago, and ran our campus ministry program for a while, worked in the education department, worked in our uh, Center for Excellence and some other wonderful programs here, so we're so delighted to have him back. We have a, a younger friar here with us who's starting back. He is at this time a transitional deacon. That means he's preparing for ordination, and that is Brother Michael Tinker. And Brother Michael Tinker, could you stand up? Let's give him a round of applause. It's great to have him here. As I stated, Michael is right now, he is in residence um, at... Uh, 
a, a church in Portage where he's our parish. Uh, uh, we have just taken over a couple parishes in Portage, and he's there and he's working. But once he gets ordained and once he finishes his diaconate uh, program and his early transition from diaconate to priesthood, he will be starting here in January full time. And so we were really delighted to have him. But he will be in residence here. And one of our goals is that he gets to meet our students and gets to meet you. And so uh, we're going to give him access to everything and let him wander around And while he's still working over in Portage. So, Michael, thank you for being with us. It's a joy to have you with us. Well, as you note, there is an interesting icon up on the screen. Probably all of you know what it is. It's a reset button. And thank God for reset buttons. Because I'll tell you, in my life, I need them. I need them for my television. Because when the television screen goes black or green or whatever color it is, I know that I can easily get my cable back again by a reset button on the cable box. I know, too, that if my computer goes out, and the screen goes green, and I can basically reset, and it comes back again. And I know also from experience, because one day when I was the principal of a high school in Florida, I had my little tracer. A little tracer is a car made by Mercury, um, if any of you are familiar with that make. And uh, I was waiting at an intersection, waiting to make a left-hand turn when suddenly out of my rear view mirror I could see someone flying down the road behind me. And I thought to myself, as I'm stopped at the red light, does this person see me? And lo and behold, they did not. They slammed into my little tracer, throwing me and the little tracer into the middle of the intersection. Cars were flying all around. I'm praying like I never prayed before. And thank God I get out of it and no one's hurt. Of course, the man comes out of the car and he says, I am so sorry for hitting you. He said, my wife and I were having an argument and we just forgot where we were. Well, I said, now what are we going to do? His car was pretty much totaled and mine wouldn't run. Now, the little tracer was pretty well made, and so the back of the car was still in pretty good shape. I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't start. What? It was just completely dead. So people helped me to push the car to the side, and I called a mechanic. And he said, well, let me hear from you. What's wrong with the car? What was damaged? Were you hit in the front? No. I said, nothing in the front is damaged. He said, I think I know exactly what it is. So he pulled up in his tow truck, came over, asked me to pop the back hatch of my little tracer. I did. He says, I bet you don't know this, but your tracer's got a reset button. I said, what? He said, oh yeah. He says, when it does this, all we have to do is find that little red button. And he found it. We pushed it and my little tracer was good to go. Reset buttons are so important. Do you know, in our religious tradition of Judeo-Christian thought, we have a number of reset buttons. And we call them, in the Hebrew, teshuva, which means to turn to God. When I've had my back on God, I can now turn and start over. I can say, I'm sorry. It's a reset button. We have it in our relationship with one another, where if we err with one another, we can seek forgiveness. And in our Catholic tradition, our forgiveness is so complete that we reset the button and we're back again. We have the major reset button in what we celebrated today when we bless the crosses. Because Jesus Christ is God the Father's reset button for us all, for humanity. In the very person of Jesus Christ, our salvation is set. We are reset in relationship with God. It's great to begin a new year, isn't it? Because what we have is the opportunity to reset. Last year we may have said, gosh, I did a few mistakes in my classroom, made a few administrative mistakes, did this, did that, maybe things didn't work well in athletics, didn't work well in this, didn't work well in that. But you know what's always great about the academic arena? We have a reset button 
called the start of a new academic year. And that's what we're doing today. We're starting again, resetting. Now, we also have a few other things that we've reset. And one of those things is, well, I'm back. Somebody had to push my reset button to get my head back here again after about a year and a half of discussion with the Board of Trustees and the province of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus about a transition. I'd like to just talk for a few minutes about that. And as I said, if people have a question, you can, you can answer. In June of 2012, I was able to present to the Board of Trustees a clear perspective of transition for the last year of what I believed my president was, presidency was to be. Starting 13, 2013, to the end of 2014, as academic year, I was still, in June of 2012, thinking I was going to be president for that last year. We had a new transition to a new provincialate. And our new provincial, Father Nicholas Polonowski, had announced that he was really considering that change, and he accepted that at that board meeting as the transition plan. Then over that summer, between June and October, things must have changed. I don't quite know what it was, but there were some changes. And so it was decided that the presidency my last year would end in 2013. Thus, there would be a transition because there were going to be two presidential searches one for Franciscan University of Steubenville, and one for St. Francis University. And I can understand, when you have to conduct two searches, you may want to do them all at once. You probably don't want to have to do it again in another year for another school. Well, that was the rationale, I believe. And so both schools were open, and searches were to go on. And they did. Steubenville elected a president, and that is Father Sean Sheridan, who also serves on our Board of Trustees. And they're doing very well. We had a slate of a couple candidates. And inevitably, those candidates were all good friars. But of course, it is the duty of the Board of Trustees to take seriously its task, its responsibility, to interview all those candidates and to see who is able to take that position. Who meets the expectations? And inevitably, I want to say this about the Board of Trustees. They did an outstanding job. For a whole year, they interviewed candidates. They had a nominating committee that searched and spent time personally with each of the candidates. Then they brought the candidates for a full meeting with various constituency groups, of our community. Some of you may have been in that interview process with, with the candidates. And so you know you had an opportunity to speak to them and to talk to them. And then, of course, the nominating committee was able to, to collect the data and made a choice. Well, things then seemed to break down because suddenly there was an end to the provincialate that we had under Father Nick and we moved to a new provincialate under Father Richard Davis, who is now our chairman of our board. With that, one of our candidates, one of the candidates that was chosen, was taken out of the picture, leaving two candidates that the Board of Trustees could not accept. And thus we have, in the jargon, a failed search. Because of the failed search, then, inevitably, Father Richard bent over to me and said, I'm going to have to put you back in again. And I said, okay, out of love for the university, I will take this year. And it's a joy to be back again. Now, where are we? Right now, the province of the most sacred heart of Jesus, its leadership council, called the Provincial Council, will be meeting with the full board of trustees. They will talk about issues relative to the transition. They will set a new button, the reset button, and begin the process again with its main goal of ending this search in March. Our goal is at the March board meeting that we would have a president-elect. I would finish up the last part of the year hoping that the new president-elect will be able to work with me and learn more about you, about our strategic plan, our goals and our vision, 
and then move us ahead as I say farewell after commencement 2014. All of the cards that you gave me and all of the other things are now being held in reserve. So you do not have to come back with other cards at the end of the year. Gifts would be acceptable. No, no, I'm sorry. You do not need to do any of those things. We had our farewells. This is my kind of swan song. And it's a real joy to be with you again. I believe we have to have trust in the Board of Trustees and in Sacred Heart Province. We have to trust that they are working very hard to find the right person. But you have to understand, we're very blessed in our community of Sacred Heart Province because if I'm not mistaken, we have about eight new postulants, young men who have just come to join us. That means that our numbers are not dwindling. We're really going strong in the church today where many orders are failing in that area. We're not. We're succeeding. So that means there will be many young men, such as Father Michael, and so many others who will be coming to join this university in time. And out of that group, there will probably be many who will be able to assume the position of president and continue to guide and direct the university along with you. It's not a president show, by the way, everybody. You know that. It's teamwork. It's what we all do together. The president is not one single voice, not one single decision maker. It is all of us together that make this university so very, very strong. That's it in a nutshell. Are there any questions? Would anyone like to ask any kind of question relative to this whole process? If you can, if you'd like to, there's a mic right here so everyone could hear it. No takers? You're shy. It's Monday. It's raining. We're back at school. We're sleepy. Oh, somebody has a question. Who? Right? Okay, Mike. Yeah, if you want to, can you? You can come down and use the mic, or you can. Oh. Absolutely. Great question, Mike, and you are absolutely right. Many colleges and also many other institutions that are sponsored by Catholic organizations, such as hospitals, have gone to a different type of a model. Uh, they certainly do expect that the mission, the values, the vision, all of those things are going to be retained. And for most institutions that have laymen or women taking care of them in this nature, there is an officer in the institution called the Director of Institutional Mission. And of course, we have that here uh, in Father Joe Lehman. So it is important that the institution stay strong and be mission driven. It's also important, though, that there be a community, which we have. So we have a great resource called the Sacred Heart Province that means that it is completely behind you. No one person, but the full province is behind you. What's good about that is, that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of care, if it's done right. If communication is open between the province of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus and the governing provincial council and our board of trustees, things can be great. Where it hasn't been so great is when it's broken down. Where the, when the Franciscans TOR do not take seriously, and I'm not saying that we, we've done that often, probably once or twice, have not taken seriously our commitment to be a sponsor. Things have gone awry. And we have that great resource. So when you do hire an individual officer such as a lay person or anyone else who doesn't fully connect to that larger group, there is something, there's a, there's a little breakdown there. So we want to make sure of that. So in our bylaws today, it reads that the president of this university will be of the third order 
regular. Now, that was a little bit of a change because years ago, it was just third order regular of Sacred Heart Province. We've opened that so that it can be a member of the Immaculate Conception Province or maybe even another province somewhere else. So there is a broader base of candidates that we could examine. Now, the Board of Trustees has been talking about, well, let's take a look at a broader sweep of possible other Franciscan communities and see if there may be candidates there if our, if our pool should begin to shrink. That may be something that the province may want to look at. The province may want to look seriously at where we can go even find lay secular Franciscans who understand the values and vision of our institution and can lead. So these are all appropriate topics, Mike, and I think you're absolutely right. They're going to be talked about by our Board of Trustees in a more open forum. And I think that there is possibly, as we look to the future and as we look to a better communication between the province and this institution to come to understand what, what our real needs are. Okay, that's the best I can say right now under the circumstances. Okay, are there any other questions? Anybody? No hands going up? Well, thanks, Mike, for being so brave to do the one. That's great. It makes me feel good. All right. If you don't mind, we're going to move to the next phase of the conversation today, which is another slide. I've got it. There it is. Wow. We were very blessed over the last couple months to be working with Credo, which is an organization, a consulting organization that's been helping us as we continue to take those baby steps with strategic planning. Because as you know, we're only in our second strategic plan. Our first was quite a ride, if you remember, about uh, eight years ago, maybe 10. And now we've completed that first strategic plan and we're moving now into our second. We went through the journey to excellence, which helped us to envision what a strategic plan could look like because we assessed our needs, we assessed our concerns, we saw where we had some weaknesses, we knew that we needed to move in some directions, and we wanted it to be very succinct, very clear, and very specific in what it was to say and what we were to do with it. And so, Dr. Rick Mann from Credo, uh, a wonderful, wonderful consultant, has helped us and we did this during the course of uh, the days that we spent in strategic planning as an administration, our planning uh, committee of the university, and also our executive council and our president's council all met with the deans to devise what it is that we need to have in clarity for our strategic plan. And as you can see, what I'd like to start explaining is from the very foundation, we put down the foundation stones, do you see? under this edifice that looks like the wonderful image of a school building. Catholic tradition and foundations of education are the very basics. So when we go and talk about why we have crucifixes in our classroom, what's the spirit behind it, what's our goal, what's our message, we're clear that we are a Christ-centered institution following our Catholic teachings and principles. That's solid. It can't be can't be taken away from us, it's there. On top of that, the next foundation piece, goals of Franciscan education, and we all know them. They're so clear to us, we could probably say them in our sleep. A humble and generous attitude toward learning. Reverence for all life and for the goodness of all humanity. A global vision, service to the poor and needy. Respect for the uniqueness of individual persons. A community of faith and prayer, the spirit of simplicity and joy, and Franciscan presence. What a great collection of goals we have, the Franciscan goals of higher education. We know we've been inculcating them, incorporating them, building them into our classrooms, into our curricula, into everything that we do onto the sports field. We are building those, and we've been doing it for a good number of years, and it has proven to have great results in making a difference in the lives of our young men and women and also of our faculty and staff. We are all transformed by those particular values. Then underneath, above, one more, a vision. Our vision is a mind for excellence, a spirit for peace and justice, and a heart for service. That's what we envision every single day that we come here. We come with the attitude that we're going to be excellent, 
We come with the attitude that we're going to bring peace and justice into the place where we work, and we come with the attitude of a heart that serves. Great vision. Great vision for ourselves, but also for our students, and that's what makes a difference. Now, over the course of the time that we did our journey to excellence, we realized that there were a number of areas that we needed to attend to. And so, over the last year, you had an opportunity to think about some of the things that we picked up, four basic themes, and you helped us to wordsmith them, and you helped us to hammer them out. That's why we sent information out to the community, and you chiseled away at it, and you helped us to wordsmith, and we finally came down, thankfully, to a writing team that we had here as well, and we came to very four very succinct images. We want to talk about Francis 2020 as the theme for this new strategic plan. Now, Francis 2020 is interesting because it not only refers to the year when probably this strategic plan is going to terminate, but it also refers to vision. 2020, to eyes. Francis 2020. You all know what our world is like today in higher education. You know what the crippling realities are out there. Government expectation. The marketplace. The costs. The competition for students, the for-profit institutions that are advertising on television constantly, community colleges that are vying for students and offering new and dynamic programs. There is great competition. There is also the reality that demographics have changed. We are not getting the students from the 100 mile radius that we used to get. In fact, if you take a look at the census report for Cambria County, Blair County, and counties surrounding us, it isn't good. Look at the number of graduating seniors from high schools. Did you walk through the paper this year and look at the numbers? They're way down. Take a look at where we are in terms of economics. We have, though, fantastic things at this university that make us prime targets in the world of student interest. Students want to come here because we offer fantastic teaching, we offer fantastic programs, we give them the best that differentiates us from any other school, we give quality, we're affordable, we need to get that message out. And we need to do some things to tweak it so that we can get there. So it means we've got to put on some new glasses to look at ourselves and to see what needs to change so that we can do it right. We don't have to do too much changing because we're already so very strong and solid. What did we come up with? We came up with the need for us to look at Francis 2020 with the theme of Francis the Educator, Francis the Collaborator, Francis the Builder, and Francis the Steward. Now what we mean by that is very simple. On the first column, education is what we're all about. We may say we do a lot of things here, but we're all about education, whether it's in sports, athletics, whether it's in student services, residence life, whether it's in cafeteria at Torvian Hall. The whole world that we live in here is about education. Our principle of Catholic tradition and foundations of education, all about education. Educating to the full intelligence of the person, not just academic intelligence, social intelligence, spiritual intelligence, common sense intelligence, problem solving intelligence. We have the job together to educate. And so as you can see, underneath educator, our prime target, our, our outcome under that heading is a transforming experience. 
That's a transforming educational experience that is across the board. How can we make this reality at St. Francis University transformative in the lives of our students? It takes all of you. It takes everything. It takes quality. It takes excellence. It takes excitement. It takes visioning as to what we can do to make the experience for our students the most transforming that it can possibly be. We moved over to Collaborator, and we realized that in today's age, we need to work better with others. We already have been doing some wonderful things, aligning ourselves with some wonderful hospitals, aligning ourselves with some wonderful businesses, aligning ourselves with so many other people, but we have to go even further. It's very clear to us that if we're going to take a look at and under that external and internal partnerships is also fundraising. If we're going to look at who the source of our funds are going to be, really we know that it's not just going to be alumni. It's going to be partnerships. Like Mr. Bill Kelly from Kelly Financial in Boston, who never had an inkling about St. Francis University until he met the dynamic place that this is. And now, right off the bat, has contributed $50,000 in his first visit on campus, takes our interns, and is planning now a new vision for us in partnership with us in the area of finance. What a dynamic thing that is. It's partnership. We have to do more of that. We have to work toward it envision it. But it's not just external, it's internal. How can we work better together to meet our goals? How can we break down the silos that keep us from one another? How can we sometimes further that process mapping that needs to be done that we all listened about during the time of our planning under the journey to excellence? How can we make sure that we are moving in the right direction together? What can we do to make it better? More partnerships internally. The builder. How can we transform spaces? And we're not just talking about putting up new buildings. We're talking about using the spaces that we have so that they're transformational in the lives of our students, in the lives of our faculty and our staff. What can we do to better bring people together? How can people learn better together? How can we create those environments on this campus that allow us to be truly builders of transforming experiences in places, in centers, in communities? What can we do to make it better? And finally, the steward. We're all called to realize that we have a responsibility to do everything in our power to make education affordable for our students. We have truly, and you could talk to Aaron about this or Bob Datsko, we have really worked hard with our discount rating program for our students. We truly have. Our endowment gives many students an opportunity and scholarship to come here that if we didn't have that endowment, that 40, what is it right now, Robert, our endowment? 40 million. That 40 million dollars, we make it work hard for our students. The rest of us work hard to try to raise the money and to keep the tuition affordable so that students can want to come here. But as you know, the costs of higher education have been astronomical. We have to try to contain that. We have to succeed in doing it. And we will. We will with coming up with some great ideas about how we can be better stewards of each and every one of our dollars and the reality of what we're doing here at this university. That's the beginning of what we call the icon that represents our new strategic plan. Over the next two weeks, you're going to get sent to you via email three other what we call progression goals that are under each of these. Those progression goals will help you to think more clearly about where it is and how we are going to attain those particular goals, those outcomes at the very top. So look forward to receiving in the next couple weeks as we continue the work with Rick Mann and our planning committee and the numbers of other people that we have involved in this to get further information on that. 
I'd like to just share with you, though, who are going to be the stewards of this project. First of all, we've, we're going to call the people that are in charge, that oversee the strategic plan, owners. And the owners of the strategic plan are all of us, of course. But we have to have some ownership coaches. And those ownership coaches are going to be, of course, the executive uh, council of the institution. Dr. Wayne Powell, our provost, Dr. Frank Montecavo, Sarah McCluskey, Mr. Robert Datsko, and Pat Sorokin. All of us together will be basically the owners of this. We will be coached in the process of creating the data and all the other information that is necessary to monitor the development of the strategic plan through Dan Kashut. Now, Dan Kashut's going to be helping us to put together what we call a balanced scorecard. So you're going to, in the next couple of weeks, see also sent to you an image of how we're going to monitor the success and the growth of our strategic plan, or where we're slowing down and where we're maybe not doing what we're supposed to be doing through what we call a balanced scorecard. You're going to have an ability to see firsthand during the course of the next number of years how we're progressing, what we're doing, and how successful we are in real time. That means we're not just going to be talking strategic plan. We're going to be living strategic plan. We're going to be engaged in strategic plan. All of you are going to have an opportunity to put your two cents into it and make comments about it in real time. Time. That's an exciting feature, something we've never had before. The gatekeepers for all of this scorecard and all the other things that we're doing will be, of course, Dr. Pat Sorokin and Chris Boffman. Finally, what can you do? Well, here's my brainstorm. This is what we're going to do. To celebrate the strategic plan for this year, 2013-2014, we're offering you an opportunity to put your two cents in. Around campus, we're going to be asking our physical plant people, since they did such a great job on these crosses, to put together some small boxes, put them around campus, and they're going to be called 2020, Francis 2020 Idea Boxes. You will each have an opportunity, and you can do it in hard copy by dropping your idea into the box, or you can email it to the people that will be posted as the owners of this project. Those ideas, whatever you come up with, an idea may be, how can you create or we create a transforming experience for our students that we don't have now? How can we or you come up with an external and internal partnership vision? How can you or all of us look at transforming spaces and thinking about how we can bring people together better to learn and to grow together? What can we do in that area? And how can we be better stewards? Most likely all of you have some ideas. Probably all of you think to yourself, wow, I wish I were in the president's seat for a few minutes. I'd come up with some ideas and I'd be able to give it to him and we'd make this campus change in some of those areas. Well, now you got an opportunity. But not only do you have the opportunity to give an idea which will impact us in our thinking, we are going to choose this semester the top five ideas, the top five. And we will incorporate your top five into the tactical part of our strategic plan. Now, that's not good enough. We're also going to give those who are chosen $220. $220, symbolic of 2020. So you get a little bit of a cash incentive here for coming up with your ideas. I know it's not much, but come on, Robert's sitting there calculating right now how much that's going to cost. <laughs> but again, it's something to say to you, we appreciate that. We appreciate your engagement. Come up with the idea. And then at the end of the semester, we will have our celebration day in JFK right here, in which all five winners will come forward. Your ideas will be posted online. Our marketing department will celebrate you. We will bring you here to present the $220 to $220 gifts to you. And we will have the rest of the community applaud you. 
And the rest of you who put in ideas, we will thank you heartily. Because that's what's going to make the strategic plan work. The full engagement and ownership of the strategic plan. You see, though we have designated owners naming the administration, it isn't the administration. It's all of us. We all have to own the program, the development, and the movement of this institution to the future. So I want to thank you for buying into this. I thank you for your enthusiasm about it. The one thing we need is a positive attitude. We need to hit that reset button and make it work for us. Let's put the next slide up. I've got it. I'm so used to Lori doing it so well. She gave me this and she said, you can do it now. Uh-oh. I can't, Lori. There it is. Reset life. Finally, we're going to close on that, on the issue of resetting life. This institution is really about experiencing one another and experience the life that we have together. We may call it a lot of things. We may call it opportunities for our students. We may call it work. We may call it so many other things I'm not even going to get into. But it really is about life. And life is what you make of it. Life is what you put into it. If we put in negativity, our life is going to be pretty burdened. And it's going to be a challenge. If we put something positive into it, we reset it. And we give it opportunity and potential and hope. That's what we need at St. Francis University. Our students coming here, they do not need negativity. The world is negative enough. They are going to face a lot of adversity. But our job is to help them to reset in that adversity a pathway to life in and through some of the most difficult experiences that their young lives will face. We know that our job as a community is to get them ready for it. And the way we do that is about that rock foundation that we together are all about. And so again, I want to thank you all for being here today, for again coming back to St. Francis University and not running out of the room when you saw me up here. I was afraid of that. But no, really, it's a joy to be back again with you. And I want to thank in a very special way, as I always do at the end of my comments, uh, I want to thank Ther Teresa Wilson. I don't know where she is. Is she here in the room? There she is. Teresa, stand up. Let's let everyone give you a round of applause. For all the work that she does in helping our Community Development Week be the wonderful success that it is. And to those that help her, we thank them all. God bless you. We end our day today here by praising God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful year, and I hope to see you often.